special guest. I know, we're spoiled. I know, I know. Another Chicago Bliss football player, Kim. Kim, please describe what did you do in today's workout? Um, we started off with some squats um, using this bar here. I'm not really used to it. It was kind of my, I wouldn't say first time, maybe my second time using a bar like that. Um, what was difficult, what I, what I found difficult with it was the weight. And while my legs are strong, I think it's because I haven't been doing a lot of weight training lately that the weight like kind of worked on my joints and my back a little bit. But you taught me how to stabilize my abs and everything like that to give me like 10% more um, power into lifting. So it helped a little bit towards the, it helped actually a lot of it <laughs> towards the end of the set. Well, you know, just a little bit of a tweak here and there and actually could be that much stronger and more explosive. It's very simple. Um, also, I noticed you worked a little bit with the, the Vertimax as well, too, incorporating some sports-specific movements when it comes to speed training, that is. Uh, I noticed one of the exercises, you went back and forth between a stable surface with a plyometric box right. and an unstable surface with a BOSU ball. Describe the differences between those particular exercises. Okay, so with the box, um, we started without that first, with that first. Stepping up was okay. Um, I, it was a lot more range of motion, and with my joints, I feel like I'm saying my joints a lot, but as a gymnast, we have a lot of impact. So, um, doing that for 18 years, I noticed with the uh, box, it was a little bit more challenging to get up on the box and then get my knee up to my chest a little bit more than it was on the bolsu ball. But after doing the bolsu ball, which um, works more stabilizing in the knee, the ankle, the abs, and the glutes, and everything like that, and then returning back to the box, it made it a lot easier. Oh, interesting. So would you agree with the statement that I've been kind of preaching for a long period of time now, for those of you who know me, would you agree that the better balance that you have gives you more strength gains and power gains? I definitely agree with that. Um, starting off with the box showed me how unstable I was at first, trying to get used to the resistance bands around my um, hips and waist. and. Um, doing then going to the BOSU ball, having to readjust and all that stuff and then going back to the box and not having to worry about the stability and trying to find my balance a little bit more. Um, it just helped with being able to get more explosive up on top of the box. Interesting, huh? Sounds like a lifestyle. Balance, strength, and power. Interesting. Um, add to that note about the lifestyle aspect of having balance, strength, and power, I understand you experience a lot, and I mean a lot, of athletic success as a Division I gymnast. Correct. So talk a little bit about uh, the path and the process from when you were very little to reaching the highest level in college. Okay, um, so I started gymnastics when I was five and it was only by, um, I would say accident. Um, I was very scared of getting shots at the doctor's office and this one particular time I was uh, in the process of trying to get away from the shot. And I ended up doing a back tuck off the doctor's table. Oh my. And I ended up doing a back tuck off the doctor's table. Oh my. <laughs> and I, and, I, and my mom tells me the story, obviously I don't remember it, but she said I, I did it and I landed perfectly and I sprinted all backwards. And from then on, my mom put me in gymnastics because she did not want me to hurt myself. It was, she didn't know how far I was gonna get with it or anything like that. Um, so I started off that way. Um, then, uh, from then on, I stayed into gymnastics for the 18 years, and through that process, I experienced injuries, I experienced um, falling out of love with the sport, falling back in love with the sport, and going back and forth through that, because through 18 years, you know, sometimes it gets hard, like different circumstances in your life and everything like that, and um, just going back and forth and then still sticking with the sport, it, it had its rewards. I'm glad my mom um, instilled in me never to quit, because there were times where I wanted to. Um, I would come home every night crying because I didn't want to pursue the sport anymore based off of something that happened in the gym or um, just how I was feeling, you know? And um, going through that process and then actually being accepted to a really good school, um, University of Illinois Chicago, and then competing D1 gymnastics for four out of the five years that I was there. It was um, an amazing experience. And even throughout the process of my gymnastics career, it afforded me to travel all over. So that was another, another good positive about being a D1 gymnast. 
Well, that's awesome. Obviously, it shows that you went through a lot of adversity as a gymnast. You hung in there, yes. and obviously, you experienced athletic success. Division one gymnast, that's not too shabby, last time I checked. Very few people are capable of doing that, and it creates such an achievement. So congratulations Thank you. for hanging in there. See, good things happen. It takes time, right? See, good things happen. It takes time, right? Yes. Um, also, in the last episode, uh, Kristen Morrison brought up a very good point in life, and a lot of us tend to forget uh, the why. Why do we do things? So, Kim, I want to ask you, why did you deal with all the adversity to become a high-level or high-performance gymnast? And on top of that, further pursue your athletic career in football and continue to, you know, fitness train. Why? Um, I think I'm still in the process of figuring out why. I can definitely say that um, I got into football because my gymnastics career was over, as well as cheerleading because I did that as well. And I needed um, some more, I needed more, I needed more. You know, I was used to always being busy with some type of sport and that competitive side of me um, needed to be fed. So I got into football. Um, I want to say the reason why I stuck with gymnastics is because it is, I believe that it was part of my purpose. Um, a lot of people were inspired by me being a gymnast and um, I've become mentors to a lot of kids, especially now as a gymnastics coach. I coach kids from ages three years old to 14 and every day it's a, it's a challenge with them but they teach me so much about myself and I also teach them about themselves too as young athletes. Well, that's one of the most rewarding aspects of my job, what I've done over the years, is simply motivating and inspire people to essentially reach the best of their potential. And it sounds like you're pretty much following a similar path as me, so that's awesome. Until then, we'll see you next time.